What if I told you that math is a game? It's not just a section of the SAT or a subject you're forced to take in school. It's about problem solving, much like playing Tetris or even rock climbing. At the heart of even the most typical algebra problem is a puzzle. Math is about critical thinking. You're given a problem, and you have to figure out a way to get to the end. All right, so maybe algebra doesn't get you excited, but what about something like Sudoku or 2048? These use your mathematical thinking in an unconventional way, so even though you're not doing algebra, you're still exercising your mathematical muscles. But why do so many people associate math with boring numbers? If you ask someone how they feel about math, a lot of them will tell you that they hate it, that they aren't any good at it, or that they just aren't a math person. Math hatred permeates our culture. It's no secret that people seem to think there's nothing more to math than memorizing multiplication tables and taking standardized tests, and the education system is partially to blame. In many schools, especially in the U.S., math is not presented as something that can be fun or creative. Many people only experience math as monotonous exercises and exams. On top of lack of creativity in the classroom, there is a belief that math is unlearnable or only for gifted students. This can contribute to students developing what is called math anxiety. This anxiety can lead students to believe that they are bad at math and that nothing can be done about it. Students will then give up when faced with failure, leading to even less understanding and more distaste for the subject. To address this problem, teachers can use more engaging teaching methods such as encouraging group work, playing games, and incorporating technology into the classroom. Since every student learns differently, teachers should try to appeal to a variety of learning styles. Students will have less anxiety if they focus more on the problem-solving process and less on the final answer. Teachers can help by encouraging creativity, supporting inquiry, and treating a wrong answer as a learning experience. This way students can see math not as a chore, but as a fun puzzle. Consider this problem which could be posed in an early elementary school math class. There are 64 tennis players competing in a tournament. In each round, the players will be paired up to play one-on-one -on -one matches. There are 64 players, so in the first round there will be 32 matches. The winner of each match will move on to the next round. In round two, the 32 winners are paired up to play 16 matches. Take the 16 winners from this round so that in the next round, eight matches are played. In the next round, there are four matches, then two, then one final match of the tournament. Here's the question. How many total matches were played? Take a moment to consider the problem yourself. The most straightforward solution is to simply add up the number of matches played in each round. This gives us 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 63 matches played in the tournament. But there is a more clever solution that does not require any addition. At the end of the tournament, there is one winner and 63 losers. A player can lose only once because once they lose, they're out. Since each match produces one loser, and by the end of the tournament there are 63 losers, 63 matches were played. Here we've shown that there isn't just one way to do a math problem, and that thinking creatively can make math feel more like a puzzle than a boring exercise. Sometimes it even helps you avoid boring calculations entirely. So relax, math doesn't have to be stressful. Play Sudoku, solve logic puzzles or brain teasers, use your knowledge of shapes to make beautiful math art, learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube, invite your friends and family to play a game of set, hex, or dots and boxes, or even come up with your own mathematical game. So whether you do a few math problems every day or work on a Ken Ken each morning, you can always improve and have fun doing so. Feeling inspired? Check out tippingpointmath.com for resources on more fun math activities.